Hello, so in my last video I showed you a little bit about how to wire a button with Arduino and how to use them correctly with digital read and analog read. In this video I'm going to show you how we take that to the next step by adding a second button, wiring it all up, and then coding it such that one of your buttons changes the mode of the light routines and one of the buttons turns the LEDs off. I should mention that I originally recorded this video and it was insanely long, and I decided that I don't think that you need to watch me do a live coding tutorial where I sit there and type digital read in real time. So instead what I've done is I've taken this code, I've made it available to you, and I've added like an insane amount of comments in the code. So you can see exactly line by line what I'm doing. I typed out in very great detail what I'm doing and why, because I think especially with interrupts, there's something that if you look through a, an example of it that somebody else has done correctly, it makes sense. I don't think it needs that much of an explanation. When we use the word interrupt in context of Arduino, what we're usually talking about are one of two things. The first and foremost is the interrupt pins. These are pins that have a special connection to the actual architecture of the microcontrolling chip, such that they can detect when a state change or a certain state is hit. You know, for example, it can say, hey, whatever you're doing, if you ever see this pin go to five volts, I don't care what you're doing, do this instead. That is called an interrupt service routine. And that is what this code uses to change the mode and also the brightness of the LEDs according to the button presses. If the brightness button ever gets to five volts, what the code is going to say is, hey, I don't care what you're doing, as long as you haven't done this in the last second, go and run the brightness change routine and change the brightness. If it's, if it's at max, set it to zero. If it's at zero, set it to max, flip it, right? And same thing is true with the mode button. The mode button says, hey, I don't care what routine you're in the middle of doing. I don't care what you're doing add one to the mode. The interrupt for changing the variable of the mode is going to happen instantly. No matter what, you know, I have some routines that are very, very long. You have to count between zero and 255 and change colors based on what number in that list you're in. You know, maybe you're on number 50, but the mode change is going to happen instantly. And so what I've done is within those programs, within those very long routines where you're doing different things with lights and it takes a long time, Every single time that the lights would update themselves, the NeoPixels are gonna update themselves. What it does is it makes a little check. It says, has the mode, what is the mode right now? And is that different from the, what the mode was when I started doing this routine? If it's different, get out, bail. We need to do something else. So just leave this loop. Now, speaking of, there's something that we should mention about these NeoPixels. These are not technically NeoPixels. I believe NeoPixel is a trademark of Adafruit, but colloquially people have started to call any like RGB LED strip NeoPixels, especially because they all work with the NeoPixel library. When we say NeoPixel, a lot of the time what we're referring to is simply the WS2812B chip. And that is a small IC that is inside of, you're not gonna be able to see it very well, but it's inside of each one of these LEDs. And so that chip is very cool because what it does is it can take a PWM signal, it can take a signal from your Arduino, and it can convert that into colors. And that happens on board. That happens inside of the LED. When you look in the code, you'll see that I have one function that's called all the time, and that is strip.show. What that does is the way that the WS2812B works is you can have a bunch of them in a line, and if you want them to change colors, what you have to do is you have to go in and tell them, hey, number one, you're going to be red. Number two, you're gonna be blue. Number three, you know, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then all at once you say strip.show and then they all show their colors at the same time. Luckily with the joys of computing, this all happens, you know, fractions of seconds. So fast that humans couldn't even comprehend it, right? But point being, every time that the, the pixels would show themselves to show what color they've been updated to since the last time they showed themselves, that's when I do that little check and say, hey, has the state changed? If the state has changed, bail, we're doing something else. We're giving up on this. So hopefully that makes sense. You should be able to look at the code and see what parameters you need to change. You're gonna to need to update it for how many strips in your NeoPixel strip you have, obviously, as well as if you're gonna change any pins. But be aware though, I mentioned that interrupt pins are special because they have a special connection to the architecture of the chip. If you're using Mega, Arduino Mega, you have like six, you're, you're fine. But if you're using Arduino Nano or Uno, I believe the only two pins are pins two and three. So luckily those are the pins that I've used. On Mega it's the same, you have two and three, you just have others. So those are the two pins that I've used for the interrupts in the code, just to make it easier because I figure the majority of you are using probably Uno uh, and maybe a smaller minority using Nano. So it doesn't matter which button changes the mode and which button changes the brightness, as long as both of those buttons are on one of either pins two or three. Those are digital pins two or three. Those are the interrupt pins. If you forget, just Google it. You'll be fine. So without further ado, let's show you how I wired this thing up. 
So when you're working with RGB LED strips, there is sort of a limit that you can reach before you're drawing too much current for your Arduino to handle. I did 18 through the Arduino and it was fine, but this is also a mega. And after thinking about it, I probably wouldn't do that again. I have actually killed an Arduino by doing that. So instead what I have is I, I have a little power supply that I keep on my desk and I just attach this to it. It runs five volts. I'll put a link in the description. It's a great power supply. I've never had it not be enough. So I've got, I've got that coming to my breadboard. And one other important thing when you're using these RGB LEDs is that you have, to, you have to make sure that the ground of your power supply is connected to the ground of your Arduino. That's this yellow cable right here. And you see if I disconnect that yellow cable, the LEDs just go haywire. You know, they don't know what to do with themselves. You gotta make sure that they are on the same grounding plane. So as soon as you plug that ground back in, they work perfectly. As far as the buttons, we've got almost the exact same setup as before. You can see that they share the five volt rail that jumps to both sides of the button but they also both have their own five kilo ohm resistor. And the reason for this is you, you may have heard people say that electricity will take the path of least resistance. That's not actually true, but it takes the path that is proportional to the inverse of the resistance. So that meaning that if you have a path that is zero ohms of resistance or near zero, and you have a path that's 5,000 ohms of resistance, the current is going to take like 99.9999% of the path that's zero ohms. So if I put the cover back on, you can see that when I press this button on the left here, it changes the routine of the lights. And when I push that button on the right, if I can get to it while holding the camera, it turns the brightness of the LEDs to zero, um, which is effectively turning them off. So it's very, very simple wiring. You've got three pins coming out of the Arduino. The yellow one is just the ground, so you can ignore it. You've got your two button inputs, as well as one signal for the RGB LED strips. And as far as the code, guys, there's really no surprises. You can see the extent to which I've done all the commenting here. Um, I've, I've tried to make it as simple as possible to make it understandable even for somebody that has no coding experience. Me personally, I learned the very basics of Arduino from a starter kit. I believe it was Elegoo's starter kit. But I found that my personal, you know, favorite way, the, the way that's most conducive to my learning is seeing somebody else do something similar to what I want to do and then just picking apart their code and seeing, okay, well, this is what he or she did for this and this and this and this. So this is what I've given you access to. This is going to be on my Patreon. I don't, my Patreon is not paid. I just use it as a place to put things when I need to put th things somewhere. So you can access that for free. Don't worry about it. And this will all be here with extensive comments again so you can see what I'm doing. The only thing that I really didn't do any commenting on was these subroutines here, Rainbow, Rainbow Cycle, Theater Chase, all of those. And the reason I didn't do any commenting for these is because I basically just took line for line the Adafruit sample NeoPixel routines. And I just made very minor changes to them uh, for my purposes, you know, detecting the mode that we're in and stuff like that. Uh, and so I did not write any of this code. I just copied it and made little tiny changes to fit my purpose. So there's the code for you. No matter what Arduino you're using, as long as it's a Nano, an Uno, or a Mega, you will be totally fine using pins two or three as I have here for the interrupts. And you'll be just golden with that. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how we did the actual CAD modeling for this sign. It's extremely simple. I think it'd be a very good first project for people. You know, this whole thing, everything that we're doing can seem a little bit daunting if you've never done anything like this before, but you'll look back on this on if this is your first project and you'll say, that was a really good introduction to Arduino and 3D printing and all these things. So this is a very good beginner project, something that I think you will get a lot of compliments for despite it not being terribly hard to learn. So watch out for that last video. Hope you enjoyed this one. I know this was sort of a, a hasty update. It's just because I didn't feel the need to sit here and explain line by line what every single line of code does when I can just type a little explanation and let you read it at your leisure. So here's this for you. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.